What's up guys and welcome back to Poppy Breakdowns. I'm Joe Gortry, the music producer behind Poppy Breakdowns and I'm at you today with a very simple disco pop funk type beat which I'm gonna break down in today's video. The artist that I would most closely associate with this type of music is Dua Lipa and Charlie Poof for reference of this video. And if you are new to this channel, by the way, smash that subscribe button right now as it is the best way to support the channel. But let's not waste any time. Let's get into Logic and let's break down this beat. Okay, so we're now in Logic and this is the production that I've made for reference of past videos for those you haven't watched my videos before one thing I always explain is the order that everything is down the side is the order that I have built this track up the reason why I do that for you guys is so you can get the best understanding of how I've actually built this track because one thing in the early stages sometimes I found really hard was actually how to start building tracks up and like what's the first elements you add and what do you what sort of direction do you take production so hopefully with this one you'll see the sort of direction that today I have taken this beat so the first thing that I want to emphasize, this is very simple. I wanted to keep this production for you simple because I feel like for those of you who are beginners, watch this production. This is something that you can very easily make yourself once you've uh, seen this video. Now, as I said, this isn't a disco pop slash funk Dua Lipa type. So what I want to do first is I wanted to lay down some drums, which felt very generic to disco pop. And, you know, this is a very simple drum beat, but have a listen. <laughs> Again, very simple, just with some fills every four bars, just to add a little bit of development to the drums. But again, this is very simple. Lay this on top. So basically the the kick and snare are from Splice. These are samples, but you can very easily find some very decent kick and snare sounds in Logic Pro X. But the, the main premise is you want to try and replicate this drum beat, very easy to use. And then we're using Logic's drum kit. I think we're using the, is it, it's either the Brooklyn or I think it was the Brooklyn drum kit, just the hi-hats from there. Again, very simple drum beat we got here. Just add a nice little open hi-hat in there every so often, again, just for that whole development thing. Adds a little bit of bounce to the drum kit. Now, the next thing I wanted to add was the bass because I wanted some sort of really funky bass line, which is very characteristic with Dua Lipa songs. So I added in Contact's very own, I believe this is the, yes, the Rickenbacker bass because this sounds so much more realistic. But for those of you who are just Logic users, you can also use... The solid soul electric bass is a big something I'm a big fan of. I also like the muted bass combination with the Liverpool bass as well. That's another good combination if you're looking for a nice bass sound. But we're using the Native Instruments Rickerbocker for this, and this is the bass line I recorded in. Again, keeping it very simple. And just at the end of the, the four bar with the loop around before we go back in, just adding a little bit of a sort of transition melodic value to it, just to, again, keep it more interesting. So this is the bass and drums. Got a nice bit of bounce to it. Okay, so now, because this is the chorus we're building, as this is how I, I built the song. So the next thing I added was the 70s classic synth bass. This is probably one of my favorite synths and especially synth bass sounds and is awfully versatile in a lot of genres. Now this is an alchemy byproduct. So a preset in alchemy, if you go into alchemy and search bass, the 70s classic synth bass, that's what this sound is in alchemy and logic. And I absolutely love this sound. It can be a little bit on the the higher, the bright side. So I've got a massive high cut here, all the way down to 500 hertz. So I just want the low end from this bass coming through, but it's just a little pad to hold on and it adds that low presence in the mix. You can hear it there. So again, that's something that we'll come back to because in the context of the whole chorus, I knew as I was building this track that I'd need to have the low end covered. So that's why I added it in at the time. But now we're gonna start adding some more, sort of like other, as I like to call the, sort of like the, the middle, the body of the song element. So we're gonna add the chords in. Now for the combination of the, the chords I've gone for, I've used the Massive Saws, which is in the Classics preset section of Logic and the Chill Out Pad, which I think is a retro synth. Yes, retro synth preset in the synth pads. Now, the only thing I've done here for them too is I've added a chorus to both of them with the mix on 100%, the intensity on 100%, and the rate at 0.33. What this does, it, is, it basically spreads the sound all the way out to the sides of the mix. So it isn't in the middle, and it keeps that space in for the vocal and the bass to really stick through. So these are the chords I've gone for. Mm. 
mainly the chill out pad. Have a listen to this. I love this sound. Oh, that was me. Very cool. And now all I've done for the chords is a very simple chord pattern that it follows, but I have implemented using transition notes between each chord. So every time I play a chord, so I think I start with an F sharp and then it goes up to a G sharp minor, no, sorry, D, D flat, down to A flat and up to B flat minor, as you heard Demi play. But having transition note in chords makes them sound so much better because if you just play the block chords and it can sound a little bit stagnant, but if you're implementing them sort of in between notes, so if I play an F sharp, then I play the next note down, that makes an F sharp sus two. So playing F sharp chord, so, but in this scale, as long as you're playing at any other note that's in the scale, so, so that's an extra fourth note. So this is the second. So that's the triad, the third. Now, if I take my finger that's playing the third and move it down one in the scale, all of a sudden we've got this. How cool does that sound? And you can do that for every single chord. So, yeah. And it just makes chord sounds so much more interesting. So, the next thing that we added now is onto the guitar. And the guitar today is Native Instruments. You know I love my MIDI guitar if you watch this channel regularly. Especially if you're someone who is a beginner to production, you don't know how to play the guitar. I highly recommend that you get the Electric Vintage Session Guitarist by Native Instruments. I use it so much. And if we're talking from just like an earning money as a producer point of view, I've earned my money back tenfold using this plugin. It's been an absolute game changer and a lifesaver at the same time with multiple a multitude of genres. So we have a mixture of muted and chords. So firstly I'll play you the chords because that kind of ties in with what I wanted to do for the chords. So very cool, very sounding spacious is a word to use. And I use the ROM reverb for that. We've got a very big 4.8 second delay, 50% mix. And yeah, it's, it's just, this is basically out the tin, these preset settings for it. But I want a really nice reverberant guitar playing that similar chord. So when you play it with these, it just completes the sort of really warm yet like epic sound that we're going for. And then I also wanted a little bit more movement. I like to this sort of music add lots of melodic value to the, the rhythm section. So obviously we've got our bass here, which is incorporating the rhythm section, but I've also added some muted guitar in two different variations. One which is more arpeggiated and one which is more sticking to the root note. And this creates this really funky, bouncy rhythm section. So when you play it with all of this together, all of a sudden everything starts to make a lot more sense. And then chuck the drums in. So yeah, it's again just building a track up. This is how I like to do a lot of the time. We're just building this chorus up. And the only thing we're missing now is the, the pads, the ambience, the atmosphere, and the emotions of the track. So I've used a combination of three different pads for that. We've got the airways. All of these, by the way, are presets for the pads. You've got the airways pad just playing the root notes down. Uh, we have the crystalline rhythms, which are the first of two rhythmic pads that we got here. Because I wanted some little textures, something different to add, and I really like this. It's just a little pad which just adds something different, very textual, almost percussive element to it. I like it. And then the glittering beat machine, which again is in the rhythmic section of your presets and logic for you logic users. Just these two together. Just thought it'd be a kind of at this stage wanted to just throw something really random in here because sometimes you've got to experiment when you make productions and I just thought I'd add them in and it's seemed to have worked really well when you hear the final product and lastly just two crashes that I've added uh, so I've got my crash sample here which is taken from splice but one thing that I've done with it is I've also bounced it out and then or duplicated it rather in this case put it in a separate track and reversed it to create a riser now how can you do that? If you want to reverse audio, the best thing you can do is you can either click on the file itself with that 
it has to be audio. I can't do this if this is MIDI, by the way. Go on to File, Functions, and then hit Reverse, and it will reverse the audio, and all of a sudden you have a riser from your crash. Now, alternatively, what you can do if you want to do this quickly is you can hit Control Shift R. That's the shortcut for doing this, which I've got used to, but if you're someone who wants to try it out for the first time, go into File, mess around. There's all sorts of things you can do with the audio, but for the purpose of this video, that is how you can reverse audio and create rises or crashes. So that is basically the production. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play you this production from the pre-chorus so you can hear this very simple uh, disco pop, funk, Dua Lipa type beat that I've made today. So yeah guys, that was the beat breakdown for today. I hope you enjoyed this simple beat breakdown that I did for you. And if you did, smash that subscribe button as is the best way to support the channel. And also comment below any recommendations that you have for me for beats I need to recreate and then break down in future videos. But yeah guys, thank you for watching. Keep making music and I'll see you in the next video.